You are witnessing the biggest paradigm shift in physics for 30 years. Evidence is mounting that the cosmological constant is in fact not constant. Rather than dark energy, which is already weird, it seems to be a type of phantom energy. This is an update on a story which we talked about already last year. A paradigm shift starts with ha, huh, that's funny, turns to curious and curiouser before the final stage that's technically known as the well damn phase. Last year we were at ha, huh, that's funny, and we're now at curious and curiouser. This research is about dark energy, that's the name physicists have given to whatever it is that speeds up the expansion of the universe. It's not just that it makes the universe expands, normal matter does that too. Dark energy accelerates the expansion. There were indications of this already in 1990. This was the ha, that's funny phase. By 1995, the community was in the curious and curious phase, and by 1998, they reached the well damn phase and accepted that dark energy is real. Dark energy should not be confused with dark matter or black holes. Dark energy is what accelerates the expansion of the universe. Dark matter makes galaxies rotate faster, and black holes are what politicians call it if they misplace a few billion dollars. What dark energy, dark matter and black holes could be related? More about this later. The simplest type of dark energy is the cosmological constant, which, as the name suggests, doesn't change in time. The cosmological constant is a constant of nature, like the strength of gravity. Or so we thought, because new data say it isn't constant. The new data come from the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, DESI, located atop Kitt Peak in Arizona. It's one of the most extensive surveys of what's inside our universe ever. The new analysis uses data from DESI's first three years of observations, in which they took images of nearly 15 million galaxies and quasars. In these images, they look for patterns in the distribution of galaxies, the so-called baryon acoustic oscillations. These are left over from sound waves in the plasma in the early universe. From this, they can extract the amount of dark energy at different times. They'd previously found tentative evidence that dark energy had been weakening over time, which I talked about last year. The new thing is now that not only is it getting weaker today than the cosmological constant would be, but that in the past it must have been stronger than a cosmological constant could be. In their new paper, they quantify this by the ratio of the pressure over density, which is a parameter called W. For the cosmological constant, constant, this W is equal to minus 1. You can see the results of their analysis in this figure. The dashed line is the prediction for a cosmological constant. The grey line is the best fit to the data, and the grey shaded regions are the 1 and 2 sigma uncertainty ranges. In this figure, the current time is on the left, and the distant past is on the right. So you can see that currently the ratio isn't as negative as it should be, and in the past it must have been even more negative than the cosmological constant. If that happens, it's called phantom energy, and the crossover is called a phantom crossing. It's like a zebra crossing, just without the zebra. Combined with other data from the CMB, supernovae, and weak lensing, the evidence for this is now at 4.2 sigma, depending on how you look at it. Not quite well done yet, but definitely curious. So it looks like the universe had phantom energy in the past, but no longer has. What does it mean? For one thing, it tells us something about the ultimate fate of our universe. If dark energy is constant, then the expansion of the universe will keep on accelerating forever. Eventually, it'll tear everything apart, even atoms. It's sometimes called the Big Rip. But if dark energy weakens, as seems to be the case, or goes maybe even all the way to zero, the acceleration can decrease, stop, and even in reverse. So our universe might end up instead in a recollapse, maybe even followed by a new Big Bang. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. But if dark energy is not just a cosmological constant, then what could it be? 
One possibility is that it's a condensate of tachyons that are particles which travel faster than light, because these can have rather weird properties like this negative pressure. It could also be that dark energy decays to dark matter, so these two might be related. In an earlier video, we also talked about the idea that dark energy is a kind of vacuum pressure created by black holes. Interestingly, this idea is not compatible with the new data because it wouldn't give you this phantom energy range. So it seems like the expansion of the universe might have been powered by phantom energy. If nothing else, I hope we can at least agree that physics has the coolest words. Hello? Hi, Elon. No, you can't power a rocket with phantom energy. Well, because it's no longer there. Ah, they've used it up. That's brilliant. You should submit this to nature. Soon, soon, you'll be rich and famous. Love you too. This is the age of big data. It's never been more important to understand how to properly read graphs and how data analysis really works. And you know what? Brilliant just put out a set of new courses on data science that help you to learn exactly that. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples, like what it means to go viral on X. Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.